Hello everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you how we can install the open journal system R3 on, um, on hosting jar. So um, you know usually um, hosting jar we don't have the option to in install the open access journal like that. But um, I figured out that this day we can just just do it manually. So just want to make a video to share with you guys. Especially for those scholars and academics, you know, thinking about, you know, I'm um, starting on your own journal or, you know, for your institution. Anyway, um, let's jump right into business. The first thing you want to do is to just um, to go to Google and download the journal. So you don't need to put three here, just say OJS, you know, journal download. And then whatever website you find, um, this one is the official one and go to that so right now there 3.4 version coming soon but right now we're gonna do the 3.3 um, yeah then yeah just go ahead and click on download and there you go uh, in my case I'm already downloaded that one so now you see um, we opened that one and we got this file right here uh, now you go to your hosting jar and uh, you know you go to what your hosting chair click on file management and you will see this is the central uh, directory so public html now um, there's nothing here uh, because i have deleted all the five if you have not please go ahead and do it so delete it on the file and also you want to make sure that um, you can go to your uh, database management in your hosting chair and to click on whatever um, database that you are going to use to create a journal and delete or drop all the tables there okay right so uh, now I think we're pretty much ready what you want to do is you click upload right here but in this case I'm going to drag and drop so I'm going to click on this drag and drop okay and it's a uploading file you're going to wait for a while now once it's up is done with the uploading the file then you can start to extract the file extract it okay so if you want to extract in the same folder like this you can say public html right so similar to this and you just click extract and you wait right now it's done with the public extract uh, if you want you can go ahead and delete this one doesn't matter anymore um, oh yeah but but now it's saying like oh okay so what we want to do is to move it all the way copy all and then we'll kind of move it all the way to the first public HTML um, I think I'm the, my, the name public HTML that I put previously can be confusing you can uh, use your own name but anyway, we don't have to move this one to the the top, you know, uh, folder outside. So what we want you want to do is to click uh, move and just uh, double click on this. And right now we are at a folder where we have this one. If you double click on this, um, so that I think we are at the front of it already. So pretty pretty good. But yeah, so. This is the top, you know, this is the, the top folder. So we're going to select this one uh, and then we we'll click move. Yeah, uh, to make sure, um, click on the home uh, symbol, go into the very top folder and you will see, yep, yeah, there we go. Um, we just set up the move to the very top channel, which is important. Uh, right now, you don't need to touch anything with this. Oh, this one actually the supporter that I created a bit earlier, so it's not really the the official or the top level public HTML. If you want, you can go and delete that one. Cool. So now basically we have that one, and we can go, we go to the direct site that you can install this. Okay. So in my case, um, I have a some a site called English Melbourne. I just go to English Melbourne. Dot com so this is just for the test you use your own domain okay you gotta buy the domain and finish whatever you have to do payment whatever to get your own domain first before you can do this kind of thing obviously 
Um, but yeah, this is just a side for the test of this video. Okay, so what you want to do is to create your username. So I'm going to say English Mail Tutor. I'm going to put my own password in. Um, I'm going to probably will repeat my password, something like this. Yeah. And uh, put my email. Oh, no, this English Mail Tutor. Yeah. Put my email in. Um, and then select the in terms of language um, additional if you have uh, I don't I don't have any so I'm just leave it right there uh, the whole point is to make sure that you go right to the drag domain so this is the, the fixed domain which the name the side domain but, but usually before files you now look back at our folder we don't have the file folder okay we don't have the file folder so when you go ahead and create a file folder, yeah, um, and you should create, okay. So that's one. Um, got a file folder now. Um, another thing to notice is that um, this is not the correct um, directory because this is the, the home, and after the home, we've got a public and then HTML. Okay, so this is actually what we want. Add this one, create the file folder. Let's look fine. And the local host name, so you're going to use your username. But this username is the username is the names of the host and everything. So you got to check what is your username. Don't use this one, use your own username for the database. Okay. And then what is the password? You're going to use your own password. Um, the database names. Um, the database name here is the database on your your hosting your account as well. Um, if you have not, then you probably need to create one database name on your hosting your account. Okay. Um, in my case, I already have like my database name. I have created a database. I got a username for me. I got the password already. So these these are the fixed information that you need to check with your um, you can keep the local host this one like um, the, the default one we use that but for the username the password and the database you gotta use your own um, yeah make sure you you know what your username is what do you know what your password is and make sure you know um, what your database name is if you if you don't have a database name just yet then go create one but you in my case I have a database name already so and then you see um, I don't have the table right now, so it's blank, and and you need to make sure that there's no tables in there. Right? It's clear, and that should be it. Then um, you can use this one if you want, like a, a journal name you want, you know, um, or you can just use it this one. But I think it's better to use something like this um, because you. This is very powerful. It allows you to create more than one journal. Okay, so it's good that you use like a subdomain something like this. And once everything done, just click um, install um, open journal system. Okay, so in my case, yeah, uh, because of the security and privacy issue, uh, I probably can you know put my own password and everything here. But because I wanted to demonstrate how it works, so I'm gonna just put it in um, here. This one. All right. And once everything done, click install. Yep, and the install has been successfully. Uh, click login, and then you can just log in um, with your username, password, log in. Right, and then you can start creating your own journal right here. Title, journal in it. Yep, and yeah, that's that's pretty much how you do it, how you create a, you know, a journal. Um, and I think you can create more than one journal, so this is just simply correct.
Alright, thank you for watching. So hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.